Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm doing a video response to one of my own videos I did uh, a few years back. And I've gotten um, some good responses and I've gotten some really nasty responses off this video. But in light of the Democrats saying that the next Democratic president will declare a national uh, emergency against guns, uh, I thought it was time to make this video. But uh, some of the nasty responses I've gotten here are over stuff I've never said. Not once in the video did I ever say that when they come for your guns, you should bury them. You know, I, I didn't say that. Um, these people say, well, you should use your guns instead of burying them. Well, I, it doesn't say that. It just says that you should have a gun cached and some ammo cached. And, you know, I lay out this little scenario on how you should do that. You should also have some backup food, too. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with people. But these people, they... Uh, they, they say that, you know, that's not a good idea, you know, to have a cash weapon or whatever you should use. And, then, you know, my, my comment to them is, what are you going to do if the confiscators show up at your house where you're not there? You know, I mean, all these Billy Badasses were going to fight off the SWAT teams and everything is what they told me in the comment section. But, you know, you could be at work or at the grocery store. And, guys, I don't care what kind of safe you've got in your house. It can be defeated especially by a government with an unlimited budget you know they can they can get in there and get your stuff and if you don't have a backup weapon in reserve uh and they you know the, the hammer goes down you're going to be out of gas that that's the way i see it but uh, all these people i asked that about what are you going to do if your guns are confiscated while you work i never got a response from that you know nothing I also uh they called me all kinds of names and there again you know their chest swelled up uh, about how you should fight back when the jackboots have the drop on you, you know. Now, all you people who said that out there in the comments, uh, you don't have to question your level of training. You know, you have multiple people who have guns pointed at you and your family, and you're gonna you're gonna draw on that. You know, uh, I mean, I've I've heard it all, and you're gonna go to a FEMA camp, and you know they they confiscated guns in Katrina, and I don't recall anybody going to a FEMA camp then. But uh, anyway, guys, all this nonsense over this video and these people, they hear stuff in their head. I don't know. It makes no sense. But I just thought I'd do a, a video response. And I, I want to talk about if you hear somebody like Feinstein come out and say, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. And at that point, guys, you will have two choices. You can either comply or not. Okay. And he, either way you go, it's going to have consequences. So, um, and let's let's talk about the, uh, the if you comply. Well, if you comply, for one thing, you're breaking the law. That's not legal for them to do that. Uh, but if you if you did comply and you turn in your weapons, um, something I can see happening down the road. Well, right after that is you know there go the rest of the amendments. You know the First Amendment. They don't want you you know talking against. The second amendment, you know, you know, it's going to be like that. And it'll be all the amendments, and it will be the thirteenth amendment. And in case you're a little rusty and you haven't had civics in a while or American history, or maybe you're a millennial and you know you never have been taught this, but the thirteenth amendment is the amendment that outlawed slavery. And if you comply and turn in your guns, slavery will happen again. And not just to people of a certain color or race. It's going to be everybody, you and me. Now, you may not be called a slave, but that's what you're going to be. You know, the government will enforce their rules, and you will have no way to fight back because you turn in your weapons. So that's that's one thing I can see happening. Uh, another thing I can see happening is um, concubine service. You know, people say, well, what's that? Well... The, the Germans enacted gun control and the Jews turned in their guns and then they took their women and they uh, uh, gave them to, you know, German officers, and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And you know what, guys, the Japanese did the same thing. They used the Chinese women and they uh, used Korean girls, 14 or 15, to take care of uh, Korean military. I mean, excuse me, Japanese military back in World War II. And, you know, you, you people want to turn in your weapons and think it's so wonderful, you're going to knock on your door, you libtards out there, and they're going to say, well, we want your 9-year-old son and your 13-year-old daughter for concubine service. And, uh, of course, some of you libtards out there are probably going to be all for that, think that's great, you know. And some of you aren't going to think it's so great. And 
if you turn in your weapon, you have no way to tell them no, because they're just going to take them. And you think that's absurd, but it's already happened, like I stated in World War II. So that's another thing. Um, guys, I, I really don't want to talk about the consequences of, of not complying, because I really don't have uh, the freedom of speech here on YouTube. Um, um, you know, uh, some years ago they asked James Yeager what he would do if they tried to confiscate his weapons, and, and he told them, and then he lost his concealed weapons license. So, uh, and then I think he had to go through some hoops, and he did get it back, but we really don't have a freedom of speech here on YouTube. I can't really talk about stuff, you know, of that nature, but um, I can talk about what would happen and if you did comply, <laughs> that it's already happened throughout history. We, we have uh, documentation of it, you know, over and over and over again. And these totalitarians take over and they just step on everybody. But uh, the other point I wanted to make is all you people out there bowing your chest up, your testicles swelling open with testosterone and how you're going to fight off the jackboots and you're going to be found on a pile of brass and expended brass and, and all this type of stuff. Uh, you people are not going to do crap if, if guns are outlawed. You're not going to do anything. You, as a matter of fact, you people will be the first people to turn in your guns and you have all kinds of excuses. Oh, they were going to take my house. I was going to lose my job. I got to put my kids through college, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. And, and, you, and guys, it's just like the main prepper said, and I don't know what he's doing right now, but let's all pray for him, and God bless him, and I hope he's doing well. But he did a video uh, some time ago about the people that scream the loudest will do the least when the rubber hits the road or the, the crap hits the fan. And he's 100% he's right, guys. He's dead on. Boy, I sure do miss the main prepper. Um, and guys, I can I can tell you he's dead on because I had an acquaintance years ago who who talked all this crap about what a Billy badass he was and how he uh, he was just a special operator and he knew more than the special forces even, even though he never had any any type of training like that. But uh, you know he he just talked all this crap and as a matter of fact he talked so much crap that it uh, he ingested it and he he believed it. You know that's how much crap he talked. He uh, ended up transferring out of one branch of the military into another branch because he said that branch he was leaving was too laid back and he wanted to see some action. He wanted to get some confirmed kills and he wants to show everybody what a great warrior he was. Well, well, he transferred and it was a short time after that his reserve unit got called up for active duty in Iraq. And guys, I want you to know he went from being Rambo Billy Badass to... Johnny conscientious objector just like that and that's exactly what you're gonna see with these people talking all this crap out there they're not gonna do anything the louder they scream the less they do now the people who've prepared and have a cool head and and I guess aren't advertising what they're gonna do uh, are gonna people who get stuff done okay we'll just leave it at that um, but I, I've seen all these people who talk all these crap. That's like these people who, who you know, uh, you, you meet at work and they talk all this stuff and then you finally confront them and they back down. It's the same thing. It's all talk. Uh, I've, I've got a friend of mine. I've mentioned it before. He is a fifth degree Muay Thai kickboxer and you would never know it. Now this is a guy that uh, he, he's very mild mannered, never says anything. And, but I guarantee if you were to try and fight him, uh, he's going to unleash himself on you. And that's what I see uh, the gun owners doing. And guys, don't be fooled out there. There's more of us than there are of them out there. There's more gun owners than there are gun haters. Okay, No matter what the media says. And uh, guys, uh, I've talked about it before. Fear is a powerful weapon that the left is using against everyone and you should not be fearful and if you are fearful uh, you should really consider now is the time to get saved and believe in your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and renounce your sins and guys if you are saved truly saved and you walk that walk there is nothing to fear now I'm paraphrasing but you know it says something to the effect of in the Bible of you should not 
fear the one who sh can destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy your soul. So, guys, uh, that's that's my uh, my advice to y'all. If if you're fearful, so. Okay, well, I'd love to hear your responses to this. Oh, and you Billy Badasses out there, I'd love for you to scream in the comment section. And um, there again, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, make a video. No, don't scream in the comment section. Make a video and show us how you'll take down the jackbooted thugs. Okay, when, when they have the drop on you. And <laughs> you people out there who are going to scream really loud about what you're going to do, you know, when they come for your guns, you people are going to do the least. Okay, guys, well, I guess I've uh, rambled long enough, so I'd love to hear your comments, and this is the Homestead Prepper, out.